Hello, Sentra, how y'all doing? Would you stand to your beautiful feet? And let's raise our voices to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. I would be hopeless without your goodness. And I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross yeah, You have won me with your kindness yeah, You chased me down yeah, I was lost yeah, Where would I be yeah, if it wasn't for Come on, y'all, let's sing. Let's say hallelujah. Let's thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. And now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Yes, hallelujah. For the cross. And all my shame was a man with mercy And now your mercy will be my soul And all the glory and all the power of the cross Come on church, let's sing it out Let's sing hallelujah Let's thank you Jesus I was a prisoner, now I'm not With your blood, you bought my freedom Oh, hallelujah, for the cross By your stripes, by your stripes I'm here By your death I live, the power of sin is overcome it is finished, it is done By your stripes I'm healed By your death I live The power of sin is overcome It is finished, it is done By your stripes I'm healed By your death I live The power of sin is overcome It is finished, it is done Stress of me by your death, I live. The power of sin is overcome, it is finished, it is done. So, thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, and now I'm not with your blood. You bought my freedom. Sing hallelujah for the cross. One more time, y'all, let's sing it out loud. Sing hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm alive. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Lord, hallelujah for the cross. What's up, everybody? Good to see everybody. Great to have all of you guys back in the house and online. If you are worshiping with us online, welcome to Central Christian Church. Um, and would you believe that I got all dressed up because I was just excited to see all of you guys and be back in the house? Would, would you believe that? Would you believe that? I did it for you. Listen, if this is your first time or your first time in a long time, whether you're in the house or you're online, this is not how we dress every single week. I don't want you running out of here like, oh my God, I'm underdressed. No, no. Uh, I actually uh, had a wedding uh, at my house. Uh, my brother 
actually got married in my backyard and I had the opportunity to facilitate uh, that wedding today. And so uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, but anyhow, um, listen, if this is your first time, your first time in a long time, your first time back in the building, uh, listen, we want to connect with you. All right. And so I want to challenge you guys right now to grab your phones. You can go to centralwire.com on your phones. If you're listening uh, online, grab your phone. You can go uh, to our online connect card and fill out that information. Uh, we want to connect with you. We want to get you connected with all of the awesome things we got going on here at Central Christian Church. If you're interested in being baptized, we want you to click that. If you're interested in serving, we have awesome serving opportunities. If, if you need prayer requests, we just want to know how we can be a blessing to you and how we can get you plugged in with what we got going on here at Central Christian Church. Amen. I also want to invite you, if you're in the building or you're online, uh, to grab your communion elements. Hopefully, you guys in the building, you all grab your communion elements when you came in, or you grabbed your offering envelope if you're not an online giver when you came in, or you grabbed uh, a prayer card if you have a prayer request. Uh, we got people that are praying for you guys every single week uh, during, our sur during, during the week. And so if you have a prayer card, you can fill that out, submit that, and we will be praying for you. Whatever your issue is, personally, family-wise, uh, we want to just know that you are lifted up in prayer and that we care about you and what's going on in your house. So uh, if you need communion, if you're at home, grab a piece of gri uh, bread, uh, grab a cracker, grab some juice. We're going to be sharing the Lord's Supper together a little bit later on in the service. And I just want to say really quickly, um, Shannon and myself were really depressed today. Um, the Cubs got knocked out of the playoffs. So this is a really hard day for us. So if you see us, just pray for us. You know, it's tough. Uh, how, how the Brewers doing? They got knocked out too? Oh, wait, hey, at least the Bears and the Packers are 3-0, right? It's awesome. It's awesome. We got something to cheer about. So anyhow, uh, why don't you guys just wave at each other around you, tell them that you're happy to see them, and tell them welcome to church. Do that at home. We're going to continue to worship. Should I? 
I'll believe that nothing stands between the power of God. That's my favorite part. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Amen. And he who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, there in the space between all the things and seen and this reckoning.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to give God some praise right there now. You all can have your seats for a moment. Hopefully you guys have worshiping with us online. You got your communion elements ready to go. If not, I need you to sprint to the kitchen. Grab some bread, grab some water, grab some juice, grab a cracker. I want you to worship with us in this very sacred moment. Those of you just joined us online or maybe you just ran in a little bit late and you're in the building, uh, we don't usually dress like this. Um, I shared with uh, everybody in the building online that um, I ran here from my house as I uh, conducted my, my brother's, my younger brother's wedding ceremony uh, today uh, in my backyard. And uh, I've done now uh, several, several weddings and, and I want to tell you, my favorite part uh, of doing a wedding uh, as a pastor and a minister is watching the man. Yeah, watching the man when they see their bride for the first time. Yeah, and it's amazing. My brother is 6'5", about 230. Yeah, I don't know what happened to me. Yeah. But he's 6'5", 230, tough guy, you know. And I love watching the, the, the tough guys, you know, just they think they're going to hold it all in. And then they see that woman. And, and he said, and I just, my favorite part is I react just like the men react. I was just like, oh, my. And I heard him say, where's my tissue? 6'5", <laughs> 235, you understand. And it happens every single time. I just love it. And I think it makes me think about, you know, when I got married for the first time, and I think about uh, the two greatest moments of my life was when I married my sweetheart, Michelle, going on 25 years of marriage, 25 years ago, and appreciate you, appreciate you, and seeing each one of my children born for the first time. And when I think about those moments, I think about what our worship team was just singing about. It just really makes me think about the goodness of our God. Because what I translate in those moments is that, oh my God, who am I that I get to enjoy such beauty? I am not worthy of this goodness. But thank the Lord for the goodness of God. See, if I was in church, I'd have got an amen right there. Yeah. All of my life, he's been faithful. Does anybody else have that testimony in the building and online? All of my life, he's been so, so good. And that's why in the Christian church, we celebrate the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I want to invite you now to grab that wafer. If you have your cup, you just got to kind of peel that top plastic part back. Church, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve what Jesus did for us. But on the night when he was going to be betrayed, 
by those who he came to love and serve and sacrifice for, the Bible says that he took bread and he broke it. And he passed it out and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, I want you to take this and eat this. This is my broken body. My body which is going to be broken for you. I want you to take and eat it in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And in the same moment, he took the cup after supper. And he says to his disciples, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, church, there is no remission. Somebody say remission. That word literally means forgiveness. There is no forgiveness of sin. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. What will wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. You say, as often as you drink of this cup, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. Let's drink together. God been good to anybody in the house? Come on, y'all clap like you didn't really mean that. God been good to anybody in the house and online? I just, I could listen to our worship team sing that worship song over and over and over again. Especially the part when they said, Jesus' goodness is running after, is running after us. You know, I like to think I'm a pretty fast guy. But isn't it good to know that when, uh, I don't know about y'all, but I spent a lot of my years running away from the goodness of Jesus. Woo, if I was in church. But I'm so glad that as fast as I am, that Jesus' goodness is a whole lot faster than I am. Come out to say amen. Yeah. Ran after me and caught me. And even though we don't deserve his goodness, one of the things that we can do, church, is we can say thank you. I said one of the things that we can do, church, is we can say thank you. Yeah. And one of the ways that we can say thank you to Jesus is through our giving. It's a great time of our worship that we get to worship the Lord Jesus in giving back just a portion of what he's given to us. And the last I just heard, Jesus has been good to some people in this house. What an opportunity for us to reciprocate that goodness in our giving. And so if you're online right now, our online hosts are putting the giving app uh, the link for you to give right now, to put in the link in. I want to invite everybody in the building to grab your phones and go to centralwired.com if you haven't already given or if you haven't gotten an envelope I want you to grab your phones right now go to centralwired.com there's an opportunity for you to go to a link you can click that link um, that says give you can just scroll you have an opportunity to give this is your opportunity to say thank you to Jesus for him being good to you for him keeping you, from him blessing you, for him opening a door for you, for him making a way for you. It's just one way that we can say thank you. I want to invite you to do that now. Those of you who grabbed an envelope when you came in, we have an envelope where we have a box at the exits. We want to give you an opportunity to drop your gift and that on your way out, just to say thank you to Jesus. You may be online right now, you're not really into giving electronically, just want you to know that uh, you can still uh, mail your offering in to 2460 Milwaukee Road in Beloit, Wisconsin. We will receive your gift. A lot of you guys have been running your gifts over to the church. We appreciate that. But nobody appreciates it more than Jesus. That's our way of recognizing God, if it had not been for you on our side, I don't know where we would be. Thank you, Jesus. So I pray you lean into this worship moment, this worship experience in your giving. We wanna pray for those right now. This has been a really, really, really tough season for you. 
and it's all you can do is literally click that button to connect with Jesus. I believe that the God of the universe is concerned about you and your situation and we want to pray together. Will you pray with me, church? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you that despite what our circumstances may say, despite how we may feel, despite what we may going through, God, we trust and we claim that you are good. I pray, Father God, for whatever situation may be going on in the building or online, that you be the Lord over it. You be the Lord over sickness. You be the Lord over, over unemployment. You be the Lord over marital distress. You be God in whatever capacity your children need you to be. But one thing we will proclaim, God of the universe, is that you are good. And we cling to that truth right now. Thank you for the opportunity to say thank you to you. In our giving, thank you. Father God, for those who have not to give, but Father God, their hearts are with you. I pray, God, that you will provide an open door, an opportunity for them to be restored financially, that they can join us in this opportunity of giving back to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. As we continue into worship, we're going to worship you because you are good and you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray and let every heart say, amen.
My name's Shannon. Thanks for being with us this weekend, either in person or safe at home with your family. There's a lot going on right now, and so we wanted to take just a few moments to get you in the loop. First up, just a reminder that you need to continue to register every single weekend for any service that you'd like to attend. Registrations open each Sunday at 4 p.m. for the following weekend, and you can take care of that at centralwire.com. KidsWorks is also available for ages four through fifth grade, but space is pretty limited there, so make sure you register any kids that you have at KidsWorks. Also, if you are deciding at the last minute, we do save a couple spots if you weren't able to register, so we'd love for you to come to church on a weekend that you forget to register. You totally can. We are also committed to our online church experience, and so for those of you who aren't ready to join a large group of people here at church, that's totally fine. You can continue to watch our stream services each weekend at 5 p.m. Saturdays or 9 and 10.30 on Sundays. Next up, each year we offer an opportunity to our members to make recommendations for leadership positions in our church, specifically for elders, deacons, and trustees. For more information on this process or to make a nomination, go ahead and head to centralwire.com slash recommendations. We are so excited that our care ministry is back to their regularly scheduled programming here at Central. And so every Wednesday, we are serving up to 50 families with a week's worth of groceries, and we could use some help in stocking up. Simply drop your non-perishable items in the carts outside of door number one by the chapel. That's it for now. I know that was lots of info, and so make sure you head to our website for any details that you might have missed. Have a great weekend. Hey, everybody. So glad you're with us. Um, I'm really grateful that you, that, that you all understand the importance of, of setting aside some time in your life every single week to gather together and worship our God and hear from him and learn what it means to follow Jesus. Listen, I know life is hard and things are super weird, but I'm really excited to jump into his word today and hear what he has to say. So I want to start by asking if you've ever been on a short-term mission trip. Maybe, maybe when you were a kid. Uh, maybe you've gone to Haiti with one of our church teams. Uh, but if you haven't, you probably should. And, and these trips are, are really not about what you can do for people in another country. It's all about what serving them can do for you. It can be life-changing. Uh, and I know that was true uh, for six high schoolers um, that I took to Kingston, Jamaica over 20 years ago. And the first faith-testing and faith-building experience they had on that trip happened before we even got out of the U.S., and it was all my fault. You see, at the time, um, you didn't actually need a passport to get to Jamaica. You just needed a copy of your birth certificate. So I had um, all the kids' parents run a copy of their birth certificate and give it to me for safekeeping. Well, and so we boarded our, our first flight to Miami without any incident, but, but when we got there and attempted to get on our second flight, um, they kindly told us that we wouldn't be going to Jamaica that day because we needed a certified copy of the birth certificates. The photocopies wouldn't do the trick. I had royally screwed up. We were stuck, and we ended up spending the night in Miami. Well, um, long story short, uh, Lynette Calhoun, who's Josh's mom, um, ran uh, the birth certificates down to the airport the next morning and, and put them on a plane that was, that was supposed to land just 20 minutes before our next flight was going to take off for Jamaica. It was going to be close, but, but we were pretty sure we could make it. Now, at the very same time, cut to my friend, Pastor Andy, who was hopping his own flight so he could be there um, in Jamaica before us and get the van we were renting all ready for us. Well, the flight with the birth certificates came in right on time, and the seven of us were feeling good. Uh, we literally ran through the Miami airport to get to our flight before they closed the gate. 
And I can still see it in my mind. As we were running down that long white terminal, I could see the gate attendant closing the gate. I'm pretty sure it all happened in slow motion. I was like, no! And I yelled at them to stop, but it was too late. We didn't make it. We weren't getting on that flight. And now here I was, 20 years old, stranded again in Miami with, with Pastor Andy on a flight to Jamaica and no way to get hold of him because this was before everybody had cell phones, kids. So the seven of us sat down in the middle of the airport with all of our stuff totally defeated. And then we finally started praying. We were desperate. Why is it that, that way too often prayer is just our last desperate attempt to fix things? Well, there were a lot of tears that were being shed in that circle. And I think one of the kids was crying too. And I remember that, uh, that sinking feeling I had in my stomach. Here I was, a kid myself responsible for these teenagers, and I had no idea what to do. And as we were praying, I honestly don't really think my heart was in it. I told the kids that we needed to pray because I thought that's what we were supposed to do, but I don't really think I believed anything was actually going to happen. Well, my mind was kind of wandering as, as one of the girls, Jenny, was praying. And, I, and, and wouldn't you know it, in the middle of her prayer that we would somehow miraculously connect with Pastor Andy, who should walk up to our little prayer group? Sure enough, it was him. Luckily, coincidentally, providentially, he too had missed his flight. I don't think I've ever had such a clear, instantaneous answer to prayer in my entire life. It was like God was our waiter. Jenny ordered a Pastor Andy and God provided. I mean, it's how you always want it to be. And I wonder if you've ever had a clear, miraculous answer to prayer like that. It, it seems pretty rare, doesn't it? But we love these kinds of stories because it gives us hope that we will get miraculous, instantaneous answers to prayer. And so I'd like to take you into another one of those stories today as we continue our series in the book of Acts. Now, last week, Peter had come back to Jerusalem after God had taught him that Jesus died for everybody, not just Jewish people. And he had to give some, have some tough conversations with people that he loved. Well, this week, some time has passed, and now Peter has gotten in trouble with the powers that be. Here's how it, it reads. It says, in the, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. And when he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread, and after arresting them, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Peter was rotting in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. That word earnestly, it means fervently or desperately. You know um, how we have figures of speech in English, like, uh, like he's over the hill? We all know that there's no hill. It just means he's old or past his prime. Um, well, the, there were figures of speech in Greek as well. And this, this word literally meant that they were stretched out. They were desperate. They were at the end of their rope, and they were praying for Peter, who seemed to have no way out. Have you ever been stretched out? Have you ever prayed that desperately? I mean, maybe it was for your kid or your marriage. Maybe it was about your health or the health of somebody that you love. Have you ever been absolutely, desperately stretched out in prayer? That's where these guys were. So Peter is sleeping in jail, handcuffed and guarded by 16 dudes taking different shifts. And in the middle of the night, while his friends are stretched out in prayer, the room lights up and an angel wakes Peter up. He leads him past the guards and out of the gate. And Peter literally thinks he's dreaming or having some kind of a vision until he finds himself out on the street all by himself. And then my favorite sitcom-like scene in the Bible happens. Let's read it. 
It says, Peter went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, uh, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back in without opening it and, and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. You're out of there of your mind, they told her. And when she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. He must be dead. It must be his ghost. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they finally opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. That word means blown away. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. He said, tell James and, and the others, and brothers and sisters about this. And he, and he then left for another place. There is so much in this that we could unpack, but the thing that matters here is this. Here they were, stretched out in desperate prayer for Peter, but nobody believed it was gonna work. When Rhoda says, hey guys, your prayers have been answered, they blew her off. They didn't believe it. I love the reality that they were praying desperately, but didn't have the faith to believe that God would do anything about it. And I love it because there are, there are people who would have us believe that if you just bring enough faith to the party, God will give you what you want. Well, in this case, they were desperate, but they lacked faith. And God gave them what they wanted anyway. And that's why some of these are the best kinds of stories about prayer. We love the hope that they can bring, the promise of miraculous intervention for the thing that's wrong, healing, financial stability, relational peace. Just give me the formula to get what I need from God. Do I need to give more money? Do I need to pray for an hour a day, two hours a day? What do I need to do to get what I want or need from him? And we read a story like this and we're tempted to say that all we really need to do is pray earnestly, desperately, stretched out before God and he'll give us what we want. And honestly, that would be a much easier sermon to preach. It would be really nice if I could feel good about wrapping it up in a nice, neat bow right here. Get desperate before God in your prayers and he will respond but we all know that it's more complicated than that. And I'm not saying that that's not true. Desperate prayers are music to God's ears. But the thing I'm gonna show you next doesn't take anything away from that truth. It just needs to slide up alongside it. I wanna take you back to verses one and two. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. Do you guys remember James? He was actually one of Jesus' best friends, his inner circle. It was Peter, James, and John. They had spent years together. He was one of the most important leaders in the church. Do you think when Herod arrested James, that the church wasn't just as desperate? Do you think they prayed any less fervently, that they were any less stretched out? If you wonder why the people praying for Peter didn't actually believe that God would release him, maybe the answer can be found right here. They had already been in this exact situation before. And in the end, James was executed. Have you ever gotten jaded about prayer because there was something you asked for that you really needed and wanted, but God never came through? Maybe somebody you love struggles with addiction and no matter how much you pray for them or how desperate you are for them, it just seems like nothing ever happens. And you start to wonder if praying is even worth it. So let's uh, step for a second into the, into the heart of John, James' brother, and the third of the three amigos. Remember Peter, James, and John. His heart must have been shattered in a million pieces when his brother was killed. And then they took one of his best friends. And listen, I'm sure he was elated that Peter was rescued in such a miraculous way, but I also question if he might have wondered, why did Peter get saved and my brother get killed? 
Why did your coworker get the job and you got overlooked? Why does one person get healed from cancer and live a long life and another suffer and die? It's human nature to want things to be fair. I remember telling my dad that something wasn't fair and being super annoyed when he would say back, well, life's not fair. You might as well get used to it. But it was true. Life isn't fair. But we think that at least God should be fair. He should treat us all equally. But did you know that God doesn't claim to be fair? He doesn't claim to treat us all equally. He does claim to be just. He does claim to love us and want the best for us. But it's not always fair. So where does that leave us? Does our desperate prayer even matter? In the book of James, we read this. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. Stretch out prayer is accomplishing things, but it doesn't guarantee that we get the outcome we think is right. This is where we begin to allow ourselves to embrace the mystery of God. And I'm not just talking about how vast he is or how mind-bogglingly powerful he is or the fact that he knows everything and can be everywhere. That's one kind of mystery, and we worship him for those things all the time. I'm talking about embracing the mystery that we don't always understand why he does the things that he does. That's a much harder mystery to embrace. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I mean, we like the sound of that, because it means that God is playing three-dimensional chess while we're all down here playing checkers. He sees the whole board. It gives us comfort, but the flip side, is that this uh, verse that we like to quote so, so often also simply means that we will rarely understand God and that can be unbelievably frustrating. And so as we close our time together, I wonder if you might admit to being a little frustrated with God sometimes. I wonder if you have ever asked why things worked out for somebody else and not for you. I wonder if you've ever thought God hasn't been fair to you. I wish I had a formula that would get God to do for you what you want, but all I have is a tried and true model for you to find some peace in the middle of wherever you are, and here it is. Embrace the mystery of God's decisions because he's playing on another level and he's always got your best interest in mind. You see, the heart of the struggle is control. We want to control God because we think we know what's best. But whenever we're willing to let go of the control and submit to his ways and his thoughts for our lives, we can never go wrong. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just can't believe the way that you speak to us in moments like this. And God, if you... um, If you're saying something to to any one of my friends, online or in the room, would you give us the peace to know that you are always on our side? That even though we don't understand you, even though we don't get the decisions that you made, even even though we don't always get what we want in prayer, we know, we know that we get what we need, that you always have our best interest at heart. We're so grateful for that, Lord. We want to we wanna walk in understanding this week. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. My God, what a word, what a word. I'll be honest with you. One of the reasons why I was excited about being here with you guys tonight, said it, was that... Um, I got a sneak preview of this word earlier this week, and uh, I was rushing here to hang out with you guys because I just wanted to be here to hear that again with you and with you online. Um, Because I don't know about y'all, but 
I feel like Pastor Eric was speaking right to me. And I wonder if you're in the building or if you're online and you raise your hand when he asked the question. Anybody ever felt a little jaded as far as your prayer life is concerned? You, you asked Jesus for some things and it, it didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen. The prayer request didn't come back the way you requested it. And it's in those times where we got to really cling to what our worship team was singing about earlier. We got to really cling to the goodness of God. And we got to really cling to what Pastor Eric was talking about, that despite uh, the results of what we may be getting in prayer, God has your best interest at heart. We've got to embrace that. And so I want to invite you guys um, to hang out on our platform on Wednesday. I got a real interesting second take on this um, that I want to share with you. It's very, very personal to me. Very personal. Um, but if any of you have fallen into that category online, uh, Facebook at 7 o'clock, uh, I'm going to share some things that I think will really connect right where Pastor Eric was teaching us today. I want to invite you to hang out with me on second take this, this Wednesday at 7. But you know, we have an opportunity, church, as we started last week, um, our love offering. We have an opportunity to help some people uh, that may be uh, praying fervently right now, like the believers were praying for Peter to be released. We got some people that are praying fervently for some level of release, and we can be a part of being a blessing. We can be a part of maybe that salvation that they're looking for. We can be a part of answer prayer. One of the three groups that we're praying for is the Lewis Street Church down in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, that church was firebombed. Can you see it? They were firebombed um, by some people that were just hating on them. And uh, we want to be a part of helping them rebuild their church. And so this love offering that we started last week that we're extending this week is going to go toward helping them rebuild their church. This time next year, our prayers that we're going to help them be in their brand new facility. We're also lifting our love offering for our kids down in Haiti. COVID-19 has been tough in the United States. Multiply that by five, and that's what's going on in Haiti. It has ravaged that community. And so we're raising money to send support down to Haiti to help those children and those families work through COVID-19 and, and what's been happening down there. Finally, we have families in the Chicagoland area that I serve. 80% um, of these families are single families, uh, multiple children. Unemployment is super high in some of these inner cities. We want to help supplement uh, these families who need help feeding themselves and their children. And so we're going to take some of those funds, we're going to buy grocery gift cards for 40 families in the city of Chicago to cover their grocery bills uh, for this next month. Will you help us be a part of answer prayer for those who are stretched out in these three components? I want to give you an opportunity to do that online right now. If you're online, you can go again to centralwire.com. Um, you can... Um, click the link that's being provided for you right now and you can give a one-time gift online. We're also receiving uh, those offerings uh, mailed into the church or dropped off at the church as well. Um, if you have an envelope, you can drop that also. Uh, actually, not in the boxes, but we have a basket as you leave that's marked love offering specifically for this gift if you're in the building. Amen. Why don't we pray and we're going to go ahead and let you guys go. Father, we thank you. Thank you that we get to be your church. We get to be your extension of what's right in the world. We get to serve and love people. Help us to do that with this love offering, to serve our brothers and sisters down in Little Rock, to serve our families in Haiti, to serve our brothers and sisters that may not look like us in the city of Chicago. And God, all we know is this, is that as we are looking to be a blessing, it's amazing how that reciprocates right back to us in some form, shape, or fashion. 
And so thank you, Father God, that you encourage us to give. And when we give, it'll be given back to us, pressed down, shaken together, running over, the word says. Men and women will pour back into our bosom because with the measure that we use, it will be measured back to us. We love you and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us to serve and bless as you serve and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next week, we love you guys. We'll see you soon.